Well, hello, Nancy Parsons, and welcome. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for inviting hey. me. Well, thank you for being on. You know, uh, you you and I had a great conversation last week, and uh, I knew that I wanted to just have a conversation and share some of what you're up to with with the uh, why not leaders uh, around the world. And uh, so I said, you know what, Nancy, let's get on a live show. I haven't done a live. You know, I had a I had a show that was called Why Not Wednesday. And I did it every Wednesday live and I had people on and I think we did it for about three years. And so we had a lot of people that followed us, a lot of people that 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 showed up. And I haven't been live in a while, but this is so much fun. We're looking at as soon as people get on, if you're if you're watching on LinkedIn, on YouTube or on Facebook, put your comments in the in the chat and we'll be glad to answer any of your questions. But I think the first thing we should do is is introduce you, Nancy. So, Nancy. You're the founder and, and uh, the the leader at CDR Assessments Group. Tell us a little bit about that so that we can kind of know uh, who we're talking to here. Yes, thank you. I'm actually co-founder and president uh, of now CDR Companies. We started a CDR Assessment Group and uh, my business partner, uh, co-founding partner is Kim Leverage. She's an IO psychologist, but we actually formed CDR back in 1998, 25 years ago. And so we developed our assessments that have been used for executive coaching around the globe, as well as other talent development and talent management initiatives. And we've worked in every sector, so it's been great. And we, and we certify internal and external executive coaches to use our assessments within their organizations or with their clients. So that in short, and then we've added, which I can talk to a little bit later, we've added a new technology, exciting technology piece that um, that we are really enjoying and that's starting to take off. Well, that's really cool. So, um, so Nancy, you know, you and I met at, at, a, at, a, at a workshop in, in Colorado, I remember. Right, right. You were speaking, I was speaking, you know, and, and those of you who know me, you know, I everywhere, if I'm speaking, I'm going to talk, I'm going to be talking about why, because I was the chief growth officer at Y Institute, and I always love to talk about why, and my company is Why Not Leadership, and so we talk about why and why not, but <laughs> you gave a presentation on your assessment, the CDR and it was so intriguing to me that I immediately went and I said, okay, I know how to help people discover their why, their how, and their what, but what you're doing sounds really intriguing. It sounds so in-depth, and, and you were kind enough to share the CDR assessment with me, and I took it, and it was so accurate, Nancy, and uh, <laughs> it, it is, for those of you that are used to taking the why discovery, and, and it's an eight to ten minute Deal. Uh, the 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 CDR. Tell us how how long uh, did does it take? I, I don't want to say what I how long it took me because I'm a quick test taker. Yeah. But, uh, how many questions? And then let's talk about the three sides of it. Yeah. It it takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour to complete all three sections, and we have over 600 questions total, or I, we call them items. They're short items that you respond to, and it's the uh, character assessment, which is personality characteristics, the risk assessment, which is inherent personality based risks. And third is the drivers and rewards that describe someone's passion and uh, intrinsic motivators. So what makes them happy? So together we call it the 3D suite. Yeah. And, well, and, and what I loved about it is under each one of those, you had subcategories. So yeah. Uh, what I loved about it is, again, let's, when you talked about character, what are the sub uh, subcategories under character? Oh, well, there's 42 of them, so I won't yes. list them all out. But like, right. for example, under adjustment, there's eight different subcategories. Right. I think under leadership energy, we have, uh, I believe, six. You mm -hmm. know, so it varies depending on what uh, scale we're talking about. But what's really cool about those, if you will is it gives you the individual differentiation. So you and I, Dan, could score 60 on adjustment, but it right. could show up very differently for us. You know, So that's what it does. It, it distinguishes how does this show up and resonate for you? How does it impact your performance and your job, et cetera, versus you know, um, you know, if we just gave you one number and you're kind of trying to figure it all out? Well, you don't have to worry about figuring it all out. We do that for you. 
and and there's so much detail to it. So 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 you look at the character, you lead, you're looking at leader acumen, strengths, best fit role, and and emotional intelligence. So some of the parts that are part of the character. What about on the driver? Uh, well, let's look at risk because that's the next part we look at, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the um the character tells us all your strengths, your gifts, and even your gaps. So where your non strengths are. But, but what, so it's very detailed, gives you the baseline of what jobs you're best suited for and, and so forth, all your strengths. Then the risks though, tell us under uh, stress adversity or somebody's pushing your button, how you sometimes react under stress. And these are ineffective coping strategies and they just happen. We develop them over time and um, you know, and they, they happen and they can undermine our effectiveness, derail our success, stall our careers and hurt our performance. So that's why it's so important to know them. We measure 11 different risks and people need to be aware of them so that they don't get thrown off track or they don't undermine again, their own success. And, and so, so then you're, you're looking at the risks or you're and and then we, the, the last part is your drivers. Yes. So you, you would think we'd capture that in the beginning, but we're, now we're looking at, at drivers. So tell me about the drivers and what are we measuring there? Yeah, so it's different than the character, which is me measuring your strengths. It's me it's measuring what you love, what you enjoy, what excites you, what energizes you mm -hmm. versus those things that deplete you, wear you out, or even annoy you, <laughs> right? So ideally what you want is to find that job or be in that role, taps into your strengths and your drivers both. So you're doing what you're good at and what you love to do. That so, way, yes, great career success that way. Yeah, and and well, here's here's a couple of things. So two things that 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 we we have to have full disclosure, right, Nancy? First of all, I, I went through your training, and right. I have got to tell you, um, I was so impressed with with the quality of the training. And for those of you that have ever done. Uh, a, a certification in in any type of thing. A lot of times you get you get thrown and you and you watch some videos and then you maybe take some quizzes and you have some interaction. Uh, I will tell you when if you get certified in CDR, Nancy is your trainer, and uh, so I got to enjoy. How many sessions was it, Nancy? Before uh, we were six. finished, we do six plus. You have homework and then you do practice coaching too. So and, we did, yeah. yeah. So. And and every and every time every session Nancy was there, uh, bright eyed and bushy tailed, and and what's really cool about that is you're you're interacting with the founder, the person, uh, the co-founder, the person who helped put this together. So any questions you have, uh, you know they're going to get answered. So uh, Nancy was uh, fantastic. So I get I got to give you kudos. The Thank other you. thing that you do that that I want to make sure we talk about is is a support you offer because you know there is. This is a robust assessment. There's a lot to it. And you get to go debrief somebody on their results. And we had the practice session during the training. But you also uh, offer one-on-one -on -one meetings. So I, I have my first, I think I have that scheduled, I think, later on this week right. to get ready for that first client that took the the assessment uh, how uh, how many people have you put through that? I mean, you still you still look you like you have all the energy in the world. I don't know how many people you've you've trained, uh, oh, Nancy. Uh, hundreds and hundreds, you know, over the years. And I, we used to, of course, do them live, do workshops, two day workshops, and pre and post work. But now they're virtual. I actually like it better in a one way for the definitely for the coaches is that you get time to really think about and absorb and understand the materials and the data. Where when we're going two days hard at it, it's it can be too much of a push, I think. So now I do miss the human interaction, seeing everybody. That part I'm not crazy about, but it's more important that the coaches really get it, understand it, and have time to work with it. So I think that spread out, we do six sessions spread out over seven weeks. We take a two-week break in between the last two sessions for the coaches to practice. So, and so, you know, everybody's probably wondering, so, okay, you called this, why not train the bottom 80%. So, you know, let's, let's catch, let's catch up on that because yeah. we, we've talked and we wanted to get, I wanted to have people have the background of what it is that the CDR is, but let's talk about how you can use it to train the bottom 80% of your workforce. You know, I think in every company, we, we definitely pay attention to our top performers, right? Our high right. potentials, our top 20% that are generating 80% of our productivity in sales. They're generating 80% of our sales sure. in, pro in production. They're producing 80% of our product, right? So what we want to talk about is what do you do with that bottom 80%, right? Right, 
Right. And, and so for us, what happened, you know, for over 20 years, we were focused on, you know, top talent, the, you know, executives and then high potentials, as you said, Dan. Uh, but then actually one of our visionary clients said to me, and she was with the U.S. Army Civilian University. Her name is uh, Dr. Leslie McDade Morrison. And she said and she had this southern accent. And she said, Nancy, I think I think you need to come up with something avatar, something digital so we can reach the 10,000 employees who aren't at that leadership level that need the self-awareness provided by the assessments. Can you do something about that? And I said, sure, Leslie, let me get on that. And then about eight years later, here we are. And we and we did a lot of research. And I, and I really did even on my own part, like looking at, oh, my gosh, we're spending all this time and money coaching people largely in the last 25 percent of their careers or in the, you know, the back part of their careers. And we're neglecting that 80 percent of the workforce. And um, so we think it's better. They need it early so they don't derail. So they really understand their true capabilities. And I can't tell you how many people ha do not have a clear understanding of their real talent and abilities. So that's why it's so important. But the, you know, so we decided to develop this avatar digital coach and we call it CDRU coach and it fully debriefs the 3D suite of assessments. It takes about an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes to go through all three modules. And then we also have two developmental action planning modules. One is develop in your own job and increase your performance and reduce your risks from showing up. And the second one is a career action planning module where we help people really make sure they're on the right career or educational path. In addition, we even have a STEM fit review in that. So we're really excited. So what this means, Dan, is you can take all of your employees and put them through this digital avatar coaching. They have to take the assessments first and then get their debriefs. So you can now provide that individual assessment and coaching to everyone. And here's the issue with millennials and Gen Zers, they're saying if they don't get career development, they're leaving. So it's a retention issue. It's also, you know, part of inclusivity. If you're saying I'm inclusive, why aren't you helping me develop? So this is a way to reach out to people. The other thing, one other thing that it does too, which I'm very excited about, and I'm a little bit of a data geek, as you know, is that <laughs> it simultaneously provides the enterprise with data to get the talent decisions right because the data from CDRU coach can come over to provide that data that's scientifically validated to say for succession planning, or mainly even just to have a talent inventory. Because as you know, in business, you have to have an inventory no matter what you're selling or producing, right? Right. But we don't right. do it with people, but now you can do it with people with you know CDRU coach and then us providing you the data for your talent inventory. So no, and and that was really impressive too, uh, Nancy, because I got to experience it. I got to do CDRU coach. Um, here, here's what I, what I will what really stood out to me how accurate it was. Uh, the the you you choose an avatar, you pick someone, and that avatar walks you through your results. And I got to hear my results, some of the the strengths and the challenges that that came with every one of those results. Um, the the assessment was so accurate, and it and it hit so many good points. Uh, especially in the risks for me, um, that was really hard. And I'm so glad that I had Nancy to go, go to and say, gosh, these risks, yes, they sound like me, but I, I don't like the me that I am when, I, when I'm at risk. Uh, so, but the CDRU coach did a great job of explaining not only, Hey, this is a risk, but guess what? There there's, there's a positive to it too. Right. right. Uh, so I really, really, uh, appreciated not only the CDRU coach, but then having the live person, Nancy Parsons, <laughs> to take me through it. Because Nancy, I, I got to admit, and and Jim Packard's on here. He knows me really well. He says, your program has taken the consistency chain to a whole new level. So I'll tell you what he means by that. But um, it was nice to have you as a human being to to yeah. walk me through. Because I said, Nancy, boy, I'm a terrible person. And, and you, t you, you, you said, Hey, look, we all have some, we all have risks, right? right. And it's oh, where absolutely. we go when we're not in our ideal place. We're not playing in our strengths. So tell me more a little bit, tell our audience a little bit more about that. Yeah. So again, uh, your risks show up when you're under pressure or there's stress or conflict, or like I said, if somebody's pushing your buttons, you feel a little uncomfortable. And sometimes we react in these ways that don't serve us very well. The problem is, by the time we're working adult age, there are natural reactions that we've developed from the time we're infants on up. Another word for it, but it's kind of psychobabble, right? 
ineffective coping strategies. Mm -hmm. So, and we can group them into three areas. People either under these types of stress and pressure e either use aggression. So they go into fight mode, which isn't effective, or they avoid the conflict or they avoid it. So they hide, they go quiet. And thirdly, uh, people seek affection. They want to make other people happy and smooth things over. And that's kind of your perfectionist pleaser. But all of them are not effective and we're better from dealing with our strengths versus those risks. One other, one other point I might make, I've written two research-based books on women in leadership in the glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. And what pulls women out of the running, moving up, is their risk factors. For the most part, what we saw is they are worriers, fear of failure, fear of making a mistake. That's their highest risk. Well, when you do that, when you go into worrying, if I'm at a meeting and that's my risk, it shuts me down. I go inside my head. I analyze and I don't speak up over fear, failure, fear of being called out. Right. So what do you think happens when women routinely do that? They're invisible. They take themselves out of the running. They're not viewed as courageous or leader like, but mm -hmm. yet they may have the strengths of a fantastic leader, mm -hmm. but it gets overshadowed by the risks. And here's the key. You can develop your risk factors. You can develop new tactics and ways that they don't hurt you or that they don't show up because now once you're aware of them, you say, oh, I tend to be a worrier. So here's some things I'm going to start doing and practicing to make sure I don't pull myself out of the visibility or out of the conversation. Fantastic. And, and th that's really good advice. And I think that's the, you know, I think that's what I wanted to make sure we pointed out. It is going to be a very honest assessment. It is going to make <laughs> you, it's going to, you know, when you get to, it, it's fun looking at the strengths and stuff. And when you look at the character and, and the, and the drivers, that's all fun stuff. But when you look at the risk, it's a real honest look at ourselves. And some people don't want to look at that. And that's why you, I think you're, you're going to be a great guest on the lead different podcast. Cause we believe in leading different through the power of self-awareness. You know, yeah. I think self-awareness is so important. So let me, let me comment on, on Jim Packard. Jim Packard wrote the book, uh, the consistency chain. Okay, and he, he and his co-author talked about George Campbell and he talked about the, the, the Pareto principle. They, they literally talk about, you know, in every sales organization, you have a top 20% producing 80% of your results. And they talk about how do you make the difference to bring that 80% up a little bit? And, and so if we can, and the, the key, according to Jim, and, and he's a simplify guy, he says, look, it's consistency is doing the, what the top 20% do is they do consistently what the bottom 80% don't do. The, the bottom 80% will do it for a few days. They might do it for a few weeks. The top 20% do it consistently. So he's, he's, he advocates, Hey, how, how do we get the bottom 80% to get, get on a streak? Right. Yeah. And so what, when he says uh, their program has taken the consistency chain to a whole new level, yeah, that's what you're saying. You're, you're saying not only can they do a few things consistently, let's train them the way we train. Let's give them the, the, the things that we're giving to the executive suite. And CDRU allows you to do that. It allows you to scale, right? Because oh, yeah. there's CDR, which the, the CDR assessment, which, which I took, and I was professionally coached by Nancy on my results. Oh. And, and everybody has an option to do that with one of the CDR certified coaches around the right. world that, that exists. But if you're a big company and you want to develop that millennial workforce that is saying, hey, I want to feel I just saw the stat, you know, oh, I put it in the post that I put out today. You know, people, uh, 94 percent of people say they would stay in a job if they felt like their employer was investing in them. Correct. And so why not do something simple like and, it, and I say simple, it's not and maybe it's not simple, but it is so easy to implement because everybody can take it and everybody right. can get their results and you can have conversations around it using your HR partners. How have you seen this implemented in large, in large groups? Yeah. I mean, what we often do is start with teams or, or group, like a department, a group and have them all take it. And then we often follow up with a workshop, a one day or so workshop to help them because and we do that with senior executives and all even if we're doing live coaching but we can now do it with cdru coach because it's one thing to be self-aware and kind of focus on yourself and how can i do better but it comes to a whole new level is how can i interact with others better and we put them through activities based on their actual scores on the assessments so if you're like an egotist and a cynic you're going in an egotist and a cynic group and we're going to work you through that versus somebody who's a pleaser perfectionist for example 
just right. as a, so it's uh, so it's relative to them because it's how they go through life and how they go through their work because it's their results and it helps them. And same with like interpersonal sensitivity. If I tend to be short and abrasive and abrupt versus real warm and friendly, well, we got to get those two groups together and figuring out how do we do this better? How do we communicate better without alienating one or irritating the other? Right. So so it's really powerful if you can then move to group uh, discussions. Some groups actually also go on to like higher level, whatever. They might do some additional coaching, too. Right. Um, and the other one we use it for is, uh, as I mentioned, some career development or college choice, like what major should I be in? And what we have found with college students or those entering college is that they usually undersell what they're good at. They don't realize they have all this talent. So anyway, I apologize for my- That's all right. We'll oh get, we'll get yeah. Fido. We'll yeah, edit Fido out in the replay. <laughs> that's flash. I apologize. No so. problem. No problem. So, so Nancy, one of the things that I really like about the CDR is it's, it's got a lot of scientific, uh, data, a lot of scientific proof. Uh, it, it it's validated. So Correct. tell us about the validation process that you've gone through, because this can actually be used to make decisions on, on the talent that you're going to develop. Yes, exactly. So what, what the process is in short, Many uh, assessments or styles inventories are test to test reliability. Oh, you're right. measuring extroversion. We run correlations, et cetera. This is actually validated based on performance in jobs. So two steps, test to test and then performance in jobs. What does a visionary leader look like? What does a salesperson and pharma look like, et cetera, et cetera. So all these jobs are studied and competencies. So we know exactly this person will perform better. When you mentioned also Jim Packard's, you know, approach of consistency, one thing we can do and we have done, you know, in sales. So what we do is we study, we actually take the assessments of your sales incumbents, including that top 20% performers, mm -hmm. as well as the middle and the bottom. And then we correlate that to the assessment results. And then we can show the cutoff scores for your top performers. So wow. that you replicate when you hire or you promote people who will make that 20% larger because they're part of it. So that's another way that you can get consistency is get the right people in those jobs. And that's what companies are not good at. That's what we're good at. So you support. get, the, so yeah, yeah, so you have the data. So you yes. you have the people yeah. that have the characteristics of your high performers. Exactly. And move them we up replicate there. what makes them, like you said, they stay on, they don't just drop off after a couple of days. One of the, let me give you an example. Uh, we worked with a uh, medical device sales global, right? What we found was we developed a cutoff score on adjustment. Nobody higher than a 70 percentile was successful in sales. Do you know why? We wanted people with burn in the belly, go-getters. If you were above 70, you tend to be laid back and complacent. They're the ones that do it for a couple of days. And then they're like, oh, I'm out of here. But if we hire the right people who have that, you know, that oomph and like I say, burn in the belly, they outperform every time. And there's other in, there's other scores too, but just as an example. And so what happens is when they were hiring people with those high adjustment scores, they just weren't performing. Right. And so we can see it in the data. And then when we look at the results, that's how we obviously, uh, and there's, a you know, the, the analysis is about that thick, the actual statistical analysis, but suffice it to say, it's well-researched and we know what different jobs look like to make sure you're promoting the right people or even hiring the right people. But with CDRU coach, we also help people find their best career path because many of them aren't on the best career path for themselves. Right. So they're not living into their strengths, right? Right. right. Exactly. So if you've got a strength as a salesperson and you're in an accounting or administrative role, you're miserable. You're out talking to people, but you know, you're kind of, so it's, and that might be an obvious one, but there's so many. I can't tell you, Dan, how many times people undersell themselves and don't really appreciate their true gifts that they're bringing to the table. Well, hey, listen, you got you got to uh, uh, I got I got to give Jim a comment. I got to put it up. Nancy, your program is absolutely amazing. And I agree with you, Jim. I, that's why I went through the training because I absolutely love it. I want to kind of. Maybe because the, the character assessment was so robust and I know there's a ton of subcategories, but there were some major categories. You looked at adjustment, you know, how do people react to change and, and how well do they adjust to that leadership energy? So you would think that somebody that scores really high on leadership energy would make 
a great leader, but there's pluses and minuses to that, right? right. Correct. So, sociability. Uh, so, so I'm going to give them all and tell me which one's the, you know, uh, interpersonal sensitivity. What does it mean when somebody scores really high in interpersonal sensitivity versus when they score low? Yeah. Uh, so, ahead. so if they're high, they're going to be nurturing, caring, sensitive, like a caregiver, like somebody who's working uh, to, to work with young children, they're giving care and they really work to just, they're helping supportive all the time and they're kind to a fault. The downside is they can't give feedback. So if they're in leadership roles, they delay or they just don't give the feedback. So they're too nice to people. And then in turn, their per the performance suffers, right? They're their friend. Now on the low side of interpersonal sensitivity, these are people who really aren't interested in people. They're more interested in the work. You know, they're focused uh, on getting things done and they are can be abrupt. Uh, they're not sensitive to how other people are feeling. They don't even look at it. Uh, they're, they're, but they're... The thing is, it's not a bad thing. We need people like this because they can focus on facts. Uh, they can focus on what's really going on without getting caught up in the emotion. So actually, all scores are good. It just depends on what job you're in. Does that fit very well? Is that going to help serve you or not? Um, so that's a I, I, I love I love that you said that, Nancy, because all scores are good. And that's the yeah, that's yeah. the important thing to, to take into account, because as I, and I'm looking at my scores here as we're talking and where I scored well and where where I scored low. But it's not well or low. No, like, no. I scored I scored a six in prudence. And I said, oh, Nancy, was that does that mean I'm a horrible decision maker? Whoa. Well, not until we started looking at, hey, well, what is what does he like to do? What is Dan going to do? What are the positives of that? And, and he's going to be a risk taker. He's going to be That's somebody. Right. That, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy that whose company is called Why Not? You, you, exactly. would, you would expect him, Dan to have a low prudence score, right? <laughs> exactly. You're a business development, a sales guy. You're a big thinker, big ideas, change, all that kind of thing. You welcome it. Where people with high prudence aren't so happy about change, right? If they have lower inquisitive. But they have a place too. They're in our accounting departments. They're in our quality control departments. They're in our safety departments. So anyway. Yeah. So TJ Davidson's uh, saying hello from Texas, oh, Nancy. Good. I'm in I'm in Texas too, TJ. So, so welcome, welcome, TJ. Thanks for joining us. I haven't seen TJ in a while, but uh, you know, so let's look at so we looked at prudence, we talked about sociability, leadership, energy, learning approach was another part of the character. And like I said, so for those of you that are listening, underneath each one of these is five, six, seven uh subcategories right. that you can look at. And so you really get a deep look at character assessment. And then the results, Nancy, what I really loved is like like you said earlier, there's positives to it, and then there's the challenges to it. And it and when I was going through the results, one of the things that CDRU coach and you did is yes, and here's the positive side of the fact that you 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 only scored a a, a six on perfectionism, Dan. But what it means is you you know you don't hesitate. You're going to try something new and try something different. Exactly. And if it doesn't work out, you don't get down on yourself. Exactly. And you let other people do details. They're good with details. You're not, and that's fine. And that's how, and what we really work to do is have teams that have all of these things, but it's a diverse team because we're all different. But if we're homogeneous, if we're all cloning ourselves on a team, that's right. what I'm seeing too many teams fail. And I'm giving a talk on HR tends to be homogeneous. Mm -hmm. So that causes vulnerabilities for them. So they need to shore those up to be able to adapt to change. So um, those differences are great though, because, and it depends on what job you're in. Like in sales, I don't want you to be a perfectionist. You would right. spend too long on things that aren't selling, that aren't adding value to what you're, you're doing. So it makes right, sense. Right. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense. Well, here's, here's the other thing. And it was funny that you said that you surround yourself with the people that have the opposing strengths Absolutely. from what you have so that you have that team. And that's what you're talking about. That diversity of talent. I, I was talking to Dave Sanderson earlier today. My good friend, Dave Sanderson says, Hey, it's, it's, it's getting the who's for that. Not how's it's, it's getting the right who's for the house, right? Exactly. You can't do it all. So let's talk about the drivers. The drivers were, were great. So you looked at fame and feedback, uh, humanitarian efforts, safety and security, scientific reasoning. Again, man, there were so many categories, those drivers and rewards. So that's what drives you. That's what you look for, right? So yeah. you look at people when you, when you, let's say, for example, uh, uh, myself, I had a 93 on amusement and hedonism. Again, I'm oh. like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me, right? Do I just always want to have fun? But when I look at my YOS of contribute and challenge and make sense, I like to do things that are fun. Fun is important Absolutely. to me. So put me in a role yeah. where I can have fun. Right. 
Exactly. And that makes it good for you. If we put you working in, say, for example, sales in a bank, you'd be miserable. On average, their scores on amusement and hedonism are like five. Right. You, culturally, you just wouldn't fit and you would be sad. I mean, you'd kind of be miserable and down. I had a guy with that same thing. He's in sales. He moved to selling to, uh, what is it, chefs. So he's in the you know, industry of cooking and dining out, which he loves because he's got high amusement and hedonism, but he hated right. banking. So right. it matters greatly because like I say, this is the retention key too, is your drivers and rewards. If people's drivers are met, they will stay. If they're not, they become unhappy, disenchanted, and they leave. Okay? Yes. So. Well, uh, let's have some more fun. And, and Nancy, since we got, <laughs> we've got the expert. I, I, I want, I want to. So, uh, risk assessment. I, 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 I truly, truly appreciated you helping me with my risk assessment. One of the things that I scored really high on was on rule breaker. And oh, yeah. so, those, those of you who know me know that my how is to challenge the status quo, do things different, outside the box. So I'm like rule breaker. So does that mean I, I am I a risk to a company? Am I going to you know am I going to get the company in trouble? No. Uh, what what are the strengths of a rule breaker? Well, we don't we don't really measure the strengths. We would then look to your character assessment. Right. So the the but what it does indicate in whole is what you just said. You push limits. You go outside the box. Uh, you and we have a whole listing of things we can expect in your behaviors because you're high impulsive, quick decision maker, turn on a dime, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But also it's that uh, it's that change agent stuff, finding new ground. So it, it pushing boundaries and not even looking back, you're like good to go. So we need and most and many of our leaders actually have rule breaking in them uh, is what we find. So it's not uncommon. Now, what we would watch, where would be the watch out, Dan? And you can look at your assessments. <laughs> Oh, is if somebody also had what we call a delinquent character profile mm, with right. rule breaker, meaning they always break rules as a matter of strength, plus rule breaker, they might then be, I wouldn't want them, you know, as treasurer of my company or, you know, doing the bank liaison or something like that. So you, you have to be careful if they're really right. risky you know, what jobs might they fit or not fit in your company. Yeah, and you definitely don't want me in your accounting department. You don't want creativity in your, in your, in your CFO, right? <laughs> right, right. I'm with you. Nobody wants me in the accounting department either. So, you know, and, 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 you. and you bring up something that's really important too, because, you know, we were talking, I was on a, on another interview earlier today and we talked about the fact that, look, I'm good at math. I, I was really good. I, I had an almost perfect score on my ACT on the math portion. But I don't want to do math. Just because exactly. you're good at it doesn't mean you should be doing it. Exactly. It doesn't mean you love it. Right. Yeah. So you have to have a passion for it. Even that, that's so true. That's where I said you have to have your character, your strengths, plus your drivers. And I will tell you, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the drivers because what happens is, is people go into their adult life and have families and are working. Too often they lose sense of their own drivers and what brings mm -hmm. them joy. Nearly all the executive women that I've coached in the last couple of years, their biggest issue was they stopped focusing on what made them happy and what yeah. brought them joy. And they're all like a stress mess. And my so my action planning with them is go do things that are fun. Go do this that you enjoy. Get back to that. Right. And that may sound funny, but it, we have to to have balance, be able to think and be at our best. Also do work and outside life things, you know, activities that we enjoy. So. So Nancy, so where I know you've got a a, a certification program and, and I, I took part in it, but you've got a new cohort starting out. If somebody's listening and they say, hey, you know what? That's something I want to know more about. Where can they go to learn more about it? Sure. Um, they can go to our, our websites, obviously, cdrcompanies.com, uh, or they can email me, uh, N Parsons at CDR Companies, or talk to me on LinkedIn. Um uh, and uh, we have a company, uh, I guess, LinkedIn page too. It's CDR company. So any one of those email us, call us. We're happy to talk to you. We've got a one page flyer that describes it, but we're still happy to talk to you about it. And, um, uh, and it really does help you what it does. It really jump starts the coaching process. When you use this up front, you know, that person from day one, you know, them very deeply, what, you know, where their strengths, their gifts, their risks, their needs. So it's much easier to help them move forward because you have this blueprint and you open, obviously, getting to know them more by using that as a blueprint in your coaching and questioning. 
Yeah. So, you know, I, as you know, Nancy, I've been using the YOS for the last four years. It's the first step I take with every, every client that I work with. Who are the coaches that are, that are using CDR? I know the people, a lot of the people that are listening here are probably uh, associated with, with, with the Y Institute and they've been using YOS. Who are the coaches that are using CDR? And, and you mentioned it's, it's a great step. So you really know your, your client at a deep level. Right. So over the years, obviously 25 years now. So we've got coaches going way back and they're in every, they coach in every industry. We've got some specialized in healthcare. We even have physicians who coach other physicians, physician leaders. Uh, like I say, every industry we've coached in the military, at the Pentagon, at the army and other places. Uh, we more do, I'd say more private industry, energy, banking, the, you know, the typical tech, things of that nature. But our coaches, as I say, kind of like Dan, you and I belong to ACEC, you know, the um, coaching association was it uh, association for corporate executive coaches. Right. So and in there we have internal and we have external coaches. Many right. of us, many of our coaches are external, but we really love having the internal coaches, too, because right. they can help really move things along. They can do some coaching, but they can help really uh, build uh, and, and even if we have internal coaches, we usually use our external coaches to coach the senior executives of the C-suite because it's not good to coach your own C-suite if you're underneath. <laughs> right, right. That makes a, um, that makes that makes a lot of and, sense. And many of our coaches are PhD or have clinical backgrounds and all these others. Not all, I would say, but we typically certify experienced folks. We don't we don't certify people coming out of college. Just you know. As, as newbies, we're we're not in the newbie business as far as coaches, <laughs> right? And so. and and I, I will tell you, I was very impressed with the cohort that I would, went through the training. Some some really experienced coaches, some internal, some external. Uh, right. Brock Brown, if you're listening, I, I enjoyed That's being cool. being with you and TJ. Uh, I think Bennett it was uh, yeah. great great stuff. So um, so Nancy, any parting words for for Why Not Nation as we as we get done here? No, I just lo love uh, to talk to people. If you want to reach out, if you also, if you want to give a CDRU coach a try, that's kind of a nice first step. And people seem to like it too, because the avatar, you know, is all yours, right? It's private, not judgmental. So again, uh, we're here happy to help and we want to build our coaching cadre. We also do provide benefits for our coaches as far as lots of information and resources at your fingertips, bi-monthly meetings. And you can call us anytime, as Dan said, and we want to help you. If you get a tough case or, or you're thinking about a new proposal, we're going to help you think through it. So we're there I, for you. And I definitely can vouch for that, for that amazing support that you guys provide, uh, Nancy. And, and by the way, uh, if you did get Nancy's contact, you contact me uh, and I can, I can guide you through, uh, get you in contact with Nancy so we can get you in. The, when does that next cohort oh, start, Nancy? Yeah, it starts March 27th. And what okay, we do so, is are 90 minute sessions. We do videotape each one, but 90 minutes once a week. So it's not too bad. It's not too tough on your schedule usually. So, no. And, and like I said, if I can do it, I mean, if it's somebody <laughs> with a, who's looking for fun and hedonism uh, all the time, I, I can tell you uh, it's engaging. It's empowering. It was really uh, a pleasure to spend some time with you, Nancy. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being, getting on live with us and, and Watson, TJ, Jim Packard, uh, thank yeah. you guys for joining us. And uh, we'll see you guys next time we go live. Thank you, Nancy, for being thank on. Thank you, Dan. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.